So spring training is coming up very soon for the Tampa Bay Rays, and I thought it'd be a great time to talk about a player I think is going to break out for them this year. And the Rays have a lot of good candidates this year for breakout season, like Willie Adamas, Yandy Diaz, Brendan McKay, Luis Patino, and Francisco Mejia. Now, all those guys have great chances to break out, but none of them are at the top of my list. The guy that's at the top of my list, Yoshi Sasugo, and I know what y'all are thinking. Charlie, he had his breakout season in the Japanese League. Don't think he should be at the top of your list. But he hasn't broken out in the major leagues yet. I'm mainly talking about having a breakout season in the major leagues, and I think he's about to have that this year, and I'm about to explain why. Yoshi has some good potential, he showed it last year. He had a hard hit ball percentile of 86, and if you're wondering how good that is, he had the same amount as Nelson Cruz. And he had a higher percentile than DJ LeMahieu, Nick Castellanos, and Mookie Betts. And I'm not saying Yoshi's going to be better than any of those three, I just think that's pretty impressive. And he had an exit velocity percentile of 73. And he had, if you're wondering how good that is too, he had the same percentile as Pete Alonso, Manny Machado, and the best catcher in the MLB, JT Real Muto. So, yeah, that's pretty solid. And he had a walk percentile of 87. Don't really think I need to explain how good that is. He also hit eight home runs last year, which I know isn't really impressive, but considering we were in a 60 game season last year, don't really think that's a bad thing to have eight home runs in a 60 game season. So, very solid season for Yoshi Suzuka. So, despite all the great stuff I just mentioned about Yoshi, there's still a lot he needs to improve on, and the majority of stuff he needs to improve on is easily fixable. For starters, his strikeout problem. He had a strikeout percentile of 26 last year, and most people would assume that someone with that kind of percentile chased a lot, but that's not the case. His whip percentage was at 66 last year. That's not great by any means, but considering how low his strikeout percentile is, that's pretty surprising. So that means that he struck out a lot looking. And the reason for that is, he's not used to the pitches he's seeing in the major leagues. Back in the, uh, his old league, the Japanese leagues, the pitchers there threw different kinds of pitches and had lower velocity than the pitchers in the major leagues. So he's still adjusting to hitting off the major league pitchers. And, you know, I think he can, I think he'll be better with that next year now that he's gotten more adjusted to the major league pitchers. His fly ball percentage was at 45 last year, which isn't really great, but he can fix that by uh, swinging at a lower launch angle so he probably could get more power out of it instead of swinging a bit more high. You know, this is kind of more of a mechanical fix and it's something he could easily fix. Uh, I think once he uh, kind of hits the ball at a more of a lower angle than he did last year, I think he'll hit more home runs than he did fly ball, so I have a lot of confidence he'll be hitting more homers than fly ball. Okay, that's probably impossible to do that, but you get what I'm saying, like, his fly ball percentage I think will decrease next year. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up, because that's basically all I have to say about this. Uh, I'm very excited about Yoshi this year, I cannot wait to see what he does in 2021 being more adjusted to the major leagues and, you know, with, with that power of a bat, I have a lot of confidence he's going to be a great player for the Rays. So, anyways, catch y'all later, and go Rays, and let's head back to the World Series.